Hello and welcome to Spur Economics. Today, we'll be discussing the new West standard errors that are used to deal with heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation of residuals. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like our content. Visit the Spur Economics website for more knowledge on econometrics, link is in the description. The ordinary least squares model and the usual OLS standard errors are based on the assumption of homoscedasticity and constant variance of residuals. Moreover, the OLS results and standard errors assume no serial correlation or no autocorrelation of the residuals. That is, we assume that the variance of residuals is not affected by the independent variables and the residuals are independent of other residuals from different time periods. However, if these assumptions of homoscedasticity and no autocorrelation are violated, then the usual OLS standard errors are no longer reliable. In case of heteroscedasticity, we can use the robust standard errors or White's heteroscedasticity consistent standard errors. The robust standard errors adjust the OLS standard errors by incorporating non-constant variants of residuals. This helps us deal with the problem of heteroscedasticity. However, if the residuals are heterosedastic as well as autocorrelated, then the robust standard errors will not be enough. For such a case, we use the Newey West standard errors. The Newey West standard errors further adjust the robust standard errors to deal with both heterosedasticity and autocorrelation. Hence, they are also sometimes referred to as the HAC or heterosedasticity and autocorrelation consistent standard errors. The formula shown here is used to estimate the OLS standard errors. We know that the OLS standard errors are based on the assumption of constant variance or homoscedasticity and no autocorrelation. This is evident in the theta matrix in this formula. All the diagonal elements in this theta matrix are equal to sigma square, which is the variance of the residuals. Therefore, all diagonal elements in theta are the same when we estimate the OLS standard errors. This reflects the assumption of constant variance of residuals. In case of robust standard errors, we adjust this theta matrix to incorporate non-constant variance of residuals. In the video on robust standard errors, we illustrated this using the HC3 robust standard errors, which is one of several versions of the robust standard errors. In this new theta HC3 matrix, the diagonal elements will be different as they incorporate non-constant variance of residuals. Everything else stays the same in the standard error formula except this theta matrix. Another version of the robust standard errors is the HC1 version, which is shown in the formula here. Again, the diagonal elements of the theta HC1 matrix will be different, which incorporates the non-constant variance to deal with heteroscedasticity. The term X transpose theta HC1X in the robust standard errors formula can also be estimated as shown here. In fact, this HC1 version of the robust standard errors is the part that deals with heteroscedasticity in the Newey West standard errors. In the Newey West standard errors, we further adjust the theta matrix and the term X transpose theta X to deal with the problem of autocorrelation in addition to heteroscedasticity. In the Newey West formula shown here, the first term of X transpose theta HC1X is the same as the one we use in the HC1 robust standard errors. This helps us deal with the problem of heteroscedasticity. The remaining additional terms were introduced by W. K. Newey and K. D. West to deal with autocorrelation. Here, M is the number of lags that we wish to consider and adjust for. Hence, we must decide the number of lags to consider based on the autocorrelation structure. By choosing M, we effectively decide that the lags beyond M number of lags are not important and do not lead to autocorrelation. Moreover, when m equals 0, meaning no lags considered, this formula reduces down to the HC1 robust standard errors. The term highlighted in the formula acts as the weights for the lags. That is, higher weightage is given to the recent lags and less weightage to the lags farther from the current time period under consideration. Using this formula, we can obtain the variance of the coefficients using the Newey West method. We get the Newey West standard errors by taking the square root of the variance as shown here. These Newey West standard errors are adjusted for both heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation.
the sandwich package inner can be used to obtain the NUI West standard errors after estimating the OLS model. First, we estimate the OLS model using the LM function with appropriate dependent and independent variables. Then, we use the NUI West function from the sandwich package to estimate the variance covariance matrix. Here, we specify the number of lags to consider or M using the lag option. Finally, we take the square root of the diagonal elements of the variance covariance matrix that we estimated using the newly west function. This procedure gives us the newly west standard errors for the coefficients. In Stata, we can use the newly function to estimate the newly west standard errors. We specify the dependent and independent variables just like we do in the basic regress function. We use the lag option to specify M, that is, the number of lags to consider. It is important to note here that the coefficients of the OLS model stay the same. Only the standard errors and the resultant tests of significance such as the T and P values are different. We know that heteroscedasticity or autocorrelation is a serious problem if the Newey West standard errors and the tests of significance are vastly different from the OLS standard errors. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth discussions on econometrics topics. Leave your questions and comments below. See you next time!